This is the Taurus 24-7 OSS Tactical, the civilian version of the gun Taurus designed to compete in the 2005 Joint Combat Pistol Trials. Had they won, this pistol would have replaced the Beretta M9 and the HK Mark 23 in US military service. But I think we both know that didn't happen. Alright, hold on a minute. I know half of you clicked off as soon as you heard Taurus, and the other half of you are about to type an angry comment about who does Taurus think they are. But bear with me, we're gonna give the gun a fair shake, see how it would have done as a military handgun, and see if it can fill a niche in the civilian world. You Taurus naysayers may have a point though. The US military's 1985 adoption of the Beretta M9 was controversial and met with legal challenges, which isn't out of the ordinary for a big government contract. Since then, every attempt to replace the M9 has also ended in controversy, including the recent adoption of the SIG 320, which as we all know was the worst mistake since the M17 gas mask. I'm sure the shared model number is just a coincidence. In 2005, US SOCOM ran the Joint Combat Pistol Trial, which was intended to procure a 45 caliber suppressor-ready pistol to replace the Beretta M9. Given the requirements put forth in the trial and the fact that it was being run by US SOCOM, it's reasonable to assume this pistol would also have replaced the SOCOM HK Mark 23. It's probably weird to think of Taurus making a handgun for the US military, but they are one of the major arms manufacturers of the world. If a little mom and pop operation like Ruger could submit the P85 up against Beretta, Smith & Wesson, and Colt back in the 80s, why not Taurus? The Taurus PT-24-7 OSS Tactical was not a brand new design for the trials. It's based on the pre-existing 24-7 series pistols, which were themselves based on the older Millennium Pro series. Both the Mil Pros and the 24-7s have a single-action striker-fired system with a double-action restrike capability. The OSS version that Taurus cooked up for the trial was a 45 caliber 24-7 with an extended slide and barrel and the addition of a much-needed decocker system. When the joint combat pistol trial fell into disarray, just like they always do, Taurus offered the 24-7 OSS tactical to the civilian market in the original 45 ACP as well as 9 and 40 Smith & Wesson. The improved decocker system was also added to the regular lineup of 24-7s as the DS model. The example I have for you today is the 24-7 OSS DS Tactical in 9mm with a black finish. The standard magazines have a capacity of 17 rounds and are the same pattern as the Millennium Pro magazines, which means I can use the PT-24-7 mags in my old Mil Pro or the new G3 and G3C pistols. The magazines do not interchange with the later 24-7 G2 pistols, however. Some models of the 24-7 had a soft rubber grip overmold, but this one is just textured plastic with a hint of finger grooves. Like almost all Taurus pistols, the ergonomics are superb. The beaver tail is perfectly contoured, and the Taurus memory pads on the side of the frame are a nice place to index your support hand thumb. The controls are all in reach without breaking your grip, and they have large textured surfaces. The OSS Tactical has a non-ambidextrous magazine release and slide release, but it does have an ambidextrous safety decocker lever. Flip the lever up for safe or push it up past the safe position to decock the striker. There's a striker cocked indicator on the back of the slide that pops out when the gun is in single action mode. These guns also have the Taurus internal lock system, which locks the trigger and slide using an included hex key. I bought mine without the box or accessories, so here's the system being used on an old Millennium Pro instead. The 24-7 Tactical has metal 3-dot Novak sights. Both front and rear are drift adjustable, but they are not true target sights. The sights are clean and bright, but there's a significant air gap between the front blade and the rear notch, which can be a problem for me. We'll talk about that in a bit. Under the dust cover is a two-slot accessory rail. The accessory rail slots are real 1913, no proprietary bullshit here. I mounted a Streamlight TLR1 so I could do a little holster work with the 24-7 and a Blackhawk Omnivore holster. That's fine for a little goofing off at the range, but if you actually wanted to use a 24-7 for serious purposes, it would be tough to find a real holster. To disassemble the gun, lock the slide to the rear, rotate the takedown lever, and pull the takedown pin out. Then pull the trigger and slide the slide off. Inside, the 24-7 is nothing special, just a standard single recoil spring, typical cam path short recoil system, SIG style barrel hood lockup, firing pin block, the usual. The only oddity is that stupid Taurus security system. 
I have a few guns with the TSS, including a Model 85 Ultralight Revolver, and it's never given me any trouble, but that doesn't mean I like it. The OSS Tactical's party piece is the 5.25 inch Cold Hammer Forged Match Grade Barrel. What exactly that entails, I have no idea. Contemporary reviews of the OSS praised the accuracy as superb, and yeah, I think it might be. The sights are clean, the trigger is good, and it shoots the point of aim. But the sights have a lot of air in them, even despite the extended slide and lengthened sight radius versus the standard 24-7. The significant air gap between the front blade and the sides of the rear notch make it very difficult for me personally to shoot precise groups with a 24-7. I know some people don't have that problem, but I do. The triggers on the Mil Pros and 24-7 series guns are a little odd, but for my money they've always worked well. The single action pole has a ton of take up, but it's completely effortless. The trigger offers no resistance until right at the end. It also breaks far back in the trigger guard, which is only a problem if you buy into the bogus FUD lore about trigger finger placement. Thankfully none of you guys believe that crap, right? The double action is heavier, of course, but the pole is smooth throughout, and it's still much lighter than the trigger pole on something like a Smith & Wesson Sigma or the FN-49. The decocker is a welcome addition on the OSS Tactical. The double action pole doesn't make a lot of sense without it. The 24-7 could be carried cocked and locked, or decocked with the safety off, or even decocked with the safety on, if you were so inclined. Like with the Mil Pro, the 24-7 was subject to a recall for an issue with the safety. On the Millennium Pro, you can pull the trigger partway to the rear and then engage the safety, which leaves the trigger still active for one shot before the gun will lock up and fail the cycle. This doesn't seem to be a problem on the 24-7 OSS Tactical, possibly because of the redesign to incorporate the decocker mechanism. I don't have a non-decocker 24-7 to compare it to. The 24-7 OSS Tactical is a really comfortable, smooth handling gun. There's no magic there, it's just a big, heavy, ergonomic pistol. I don't shoot mine much, but it's been totally reliable and it's a real pleasure to shoot. The OSS Tactical was replaced along with the rest of the 24-7 series by the 24-7 G2 series, which unified the lineup. The G2s use different magazines for some reason, and they all have the decocker system and ambidextrous controls. I don't think the G2s were quite as nice as the original guns, and they were discontinued after only a few years. For my money, the 24-7 series were the best guns Taurus made until probably the recent release of the G3. So back to our original question, if the 2005 Joint Combat Pistol Trial had proceeded as planned, could Taurus have clinched the contract? Among the other contenders in the trial were the Ruger P345, the HK45C, and the Beretta PX4 Storm. I have a Ruger P345, and I can tell you from experience that at the very least, the 24-7 OSS Tactical would not have come in last place. The biggest issues with the 24-7 OSS Tactical are the fiddly double-action, single-action striker system and the internal lock. The lock would probably not be included on the military version, god I hope not anyway. As for the trigger system, in the alternate timeline where the US military is just starting to phase out their fleet of 24-7 OSS Tacticals, I'm sure it would have been updated to a typical Glock-style trigger somewhere in the intervening decade and a half, just like what happened with the Walther P99 in the end. Oh well, it's not important because handguns play virtually no part in warfighting, and every military weapons trial is 90% cronyism and 10% congressional incompetence. It's possible I had those numbers backwards. Thanks for watching. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. We would appreciate it if you'd check them out. We are also supported directly by our viewers via Subscribestar and Patreon. Links to both of those are in the video description. James does all sorts of cool giveaways for our supporters, so go ahead and check those out as well. We've also got a Discord server that you can join and ask questions or just talk about anime. No points for guessing which is the more popular option. See you next time.